So most folks in the room, I imagine, have busy schedules. OK, maybe you don't. You have lots of free time, and that's fine as well. Um, but imagine that you were talking, and then your boss walked in and hand you a note. And it said, great job. You did a wonderful job on the last activity I asked you to lead for us. And then the further you read that note or the email, you felt like this. Because unfortunately, the note didn't just say, good job. It said, Graylin, I appreciate the work you do. You do it so well that I'm about to give you another assignment with no new resources and no additional help. And then you thought, this is already my life. And yes, for Alex, the fellow at Oregon State, this really is her life. Um, Post-its are her thing. Um, but the reality is, all too often, we get into spaces where we allow the things that we want to do um, to be task after task after task, as if we can do new initiative after new initiative after new initiative with no additional capacity. Because at the end of the day, you aren't here for money. You're just here to help students be successful. And so we know that ultimately when universities collaborate, students win. The problem is oftentimes we talk about collaboration as this thing that just happens. If we get all of the schools in the Big Ten, for example, together, they would suddenly work together and our students would be better for it. If we got 11 institutions across the world together, or across the country together, in this thing called the University Innovation Alliance, our students would be better supported because if students work together, if campuses work together, students are well supported. Sure, if we actually do work. And so there's this idea that capacity is essential. Um, Oftentimes, we have the flawed belief that uh, we have this flawed belief that if we simply put people in the room together, that is collaboration. Um, and that ultimately, it doesn't matter what is already on your plate, but you don't need additional time, energy, or effort just simply by working together by this thing, collaboration, which is already your job, is what we tell you, that capacity isn't necessary. But we know that isn't true. And so I'm going to step back from this idea of capacity and tell you a simple personal story. Um, we know that when institutions invest in students, students are more successful. And this story starts for me at a place called Illinois Wesleyan. Um, it was 2009-ish. Um, I was in school, and I went to college, and my brother and I were the first two in our families to go to college. And we did what most kids are taught who never had a family member go to college. If you want to be successful in life, you become one of two things, a lawyer or a doctor. My brother, who went to school three years earlier than me, decided he would be the lawyer, so I had to be the doctor. And when we talked about it, Ben Carson wasn't in government, and so I wanted to be a pediatric neurosurgeon. But here's what happened. I got to college. I was a great student in high school. I think I did well in college as well. But after studying at Duke's Medical Center for a summer, going to Copenhagen, Denmark, and studying at their national hospital for a semester, um, and then having eight people in the span of eight semesters die from mistreatment at hospitals, I realized that I didn't really trust the medical center, the system. So it'd be really difficult to be a doctor who didn't trust medicine. So what do you do? I was one of those kids who said, well, I wanted to be a doctor. I went to college to be a doctor, and now I don't. I don't know what you do with a biology degree besides go to medical school. And fortunately for me, and I hope fortunately for many of you in the room, I had really good people at Illinois Wesleyan who worked in student affairs. They decided that it was inappropriate for me to get to the end of my academic career without the opportunity to really understand what I could be beyond what the limited scope of understanding professionalism was for me. And so we talked about what I enjoyed most in college. And the reality was it was student affairs. It was the work of working with students, helping them navigate campuses and institutions. And so today, I'm a full-time employee at The Ohio State University. Go Bucks. Um, and the reality is I love my work. I'm a fellow. I get to help Ohio State solve problems. I get to help Ohio State support students. Um, but if you asked me two years ago what I thought about my job, I would be honest. I hated it. Um, at the time, I was both a fellow and another position, and we said, it's one FTE, you can do all of these things and be just fine. You all know those split appointments. 
they sound great on paper. You don't have time to do either because everyone thinks you have two full-time jobs. Uh, and so I was so frustrated that I was ready to leave higher ed, so much so that I was gonna quit Ohio State and I started to search for jobs in the federal government. Things have changed since then, but that is okay. <laughs> and so here's the problem. Collaboration is not everyday work. It is often additional work beyond what you are already doing. So that means collaboration requires time, energy, and people. It's insufficient to say that we can do what we were doing and do collaboration on top of that and be successful. And as you've heard from many a speaker, change is hard, but that is not where we have to end. And so here's what you need if you really want to be a collaborator cross-institutionally. You need someone who will be a project manager for you. You need someone who can shuttle diplomacy. That is, they can be in the middle of the organization and get information up and down it in ways that have people feel included and a part of the work that is happening. But most importantly, you need someone who will see, own, and solve problems so that we don't simply bring problems to the busy administrator, but we offer them vetted solutions um, that them decisions can be made from. And so the UIA has a bit of information about this. Um, we borrowed a model from Arizona State University called the University Innovation Fellowship. Um, that is a dedicated resource to President Crow, where he can have an idea or a problem that he wants solved, he can send it over to that group, and then they work to create solutions that can be brought back to President Crow to be implemented across the university. And we have some UI fellows in the room. Wave, y'all. And we didn't stop there. We also have the University Innovation Alliance fellows, and you'll notice this is the picture that Bridget used before me, but I'm missing now because we now have Christina King, who's the most recent addition to the fellow family at Purdue University. Hi, Christina. And so this is what we really need to do for this to work. We have to acknowledge that collaboration, innovation, and change is real work, and that's work beyond the work that you are already paid to be here for. It can't simply be that this new thing is something we will do with 5% of your time so that you can keep moving. It is that this is work that we must appropriately support. And so with that, I'm encouraging us to let's get creative in the use of our capacity. Thank you.